Is there anything better than a really good vacation? And I'm not talking about the kind of vacation where you do all the work and you end up needing a vacation to recover from your vacation. I mean a trip that is just for you. So of course it's going to include running in beautiful places, indulging in amazing food, and hanging out with people who really, really get you. If that sounds like a dream come true, it can actually be your reality this year. Running vacations or running retreats are back with a vengeance because running like you and me are ready to get back together in person and share a unique experience that we will never forget. Welcome to The Planted Runner. I'm Coach Claire Bartholik, and my mission is to help you improve your running, your mindset, and your life with science-backed training and plant-based nutrition. In this conversation, I'll be talking with Sarah Bowen Shea of Another Mother Runner, who has been leading running retreats for over a decade. You'll learn what to expect on an all-inclusive running retreat, especially if you're going on your own, what to pack, and how going on a running vacation can dramatically change your life. A running retreat changed my life because I was hired as a coach a few weeks later and now this is my career, which is clearly not everyone's path. But I still considered the runners that I met that year to be my friends and I cherish the memories of all the running trips I've been on since. Of course, most of you know that I'll be hosting my first official running retreat this September here in beautiful Asheville, North Carolina. So I wanted to learn from Sarah what makes a curated trip for runners so special. Quick reminder that early bird pricing for the Asheville retreat does end at the end of February 2023. So head to theblendedrunner.com slash retreat to reserve your spot now. Sarah Bowen Shea hosts running retreats for women all across the country, and we will have all the links in our show notes if you'd like to learn more about the amazing trips she puts on. Don't forget to stay tuned all the way to the end of the episode for another Mental Strength Minute. Fortify your mind in 60 seconds or less. And now here's my conversation with Sarah Bowen Shea. Welcome to The Planted Runner, Sarah. I'm delighted to be here, Claire. So today I want to get into the topic of running retreats, run vacations. You are an expert in these. You've hosted quite a few of these, I'm sure. And I first want to start by saying my life entirely changed when I went on one of these running retreats. And I'm sure they are very impactful for other people as well. So let's get started with why you love them so much. Well, so much of our lives these days is lived online, particularly, I mean, another mother runner is largely a virtual community. And so to be able to meet the people that you've seen posts from that you've, you know, seen Instagram photos of, you know, all those things to be able to meet those people, IRL in real life (laughs) is just so much fun. And just really can make, as you say, a difference in people's lives. Absolutely. And, you know, as I look out my window today, I'm looking at the cold and gray and it's probably going to be rainy. (laughs) And, uh, you know, running retreats are usually in really nice, fun spots. Tell me some of the places that you host retreats. So we kicked it off in 2015 in not a place that some people might think as uh, an ideal running retreat location. It was Little Rock, Arkansas. Wow. (laughs) So it was a little bit of a um, heavy uh, rock to push up the hill to sell it. But I got to say, Little Rock, Arkansas, an utterly charming place with great running along, I guess that's the Arkansas River. So really beautiful trail right there along the river. And so we started that in 2015. Like I said, and we've gone on, we've had it in Cape Cod twice out in Massachusetts. Um, So running along, you know, a a beachside trail. We have gone to Hilton Head Island in South Carolina three times. That's the our uh, biggest one. We're going back there again for a third time. Our hotel looks right out onto the beach. We in the past have had a race on the beach itself, very hard packed sand, very flat. We've gone to we we find that going to kind of out of the way places case in point, Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, We've also gone to um, Spokane, Washington. We've gone to Ogden, Utah, where we took part. We oftentimes have a race as the cornerstone of our retreats. And so we got to take part for that when we did the Ogden Marathon, or people could choose the half marathon or even the marathon relay. We went to Eau Claire, Wisconsin, where I had a ton of fun doing the um, marathon relay with some retreat attendees. So just going to places that, that I love a cute, charming town. And so we try to find spots like that. And when it came to Little Rock, I was in 
my hotel at this amazing historic hotel and we'd been wanting to have a retreat for years and I was brushing my teeth and I thought, this is it. This is where we're going to have it. So, oh, and fantastic food. I'm all about food. So yes. having great food. Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. The little, little rock thing threw me. I, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, but I'm, but you know, I've only driven through little rock, so I can't say that's, that's really cool. So let's say I am, I've never been on one. What can I expect? I, I hit the, I hit the buy button. And mm -hmm. what do I expect when I get there? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so it's four days, three nights. It's for our retreats. It's anywhere from about 60 to 75 women. And it is, we bring in experts to give talks about whether it's strength training for runners or nutrition, you know, something that you know about. Um, we have running coaches there. So maybe it's how to um, improve your form, things like that. And then we um, always record an episode of our podcast the first night. We have, um, as I said, great meals. And we have an icebreaker events on the first night so that people get to know each other. And then we run every morning. We bring in a yoga instructor. Dimity, my business partner, can no longer run. So she leads walks that she mixes in strength training with it. And then for most of our uh, retreats, as I said, we have a race. So that's typically on the Sunday morning of our retreat. But then this year we're doing one in Redmond, Oregon, which is in the high desert of Oregon, which is just gorgeous, gorgeous country. And if you haven't been to the high desert, it's kind of a mind blower. It's like, wait, I'm at elevation yet. It seems like a desert here. I don't understand. Um, so that one we're doing a lot of hiking because there's this gorgeous state park near there called Smith Rock. So, and for that one, we're going to do some canoeing and wow. yeah. So, oh, and we might have some pickleball instruction because I'm an avid pickleball <laughs> player. So we, we have a, um, I don't want to say a formula, but we have a, a schedule that pretty much doesn't vary all that much. We bring in different guests, but we, we found something that works and we stick with it. But for this Redwin one, we're like, Hey, you know, we're not going to have a race. Let's throw the barn door wide open and see what's possible. And then a major hallmark of our retreats is our final night. We do a farewell dinner that includes karaoke. <laughs> and and uh, there might be some eye rolls going on in the as, among the listeners right now. But I tell you, people are like, no, 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 I don't do karaoke. Don't do karaoke. Well, you can be, you know, an avid audience participant. We get backup dancers and it's very liberating. You know, how often do you kind of let your hair down and go a little crazy? And to, particularly to be in a group of all women that you've spent so much time with, then you feel very safe and you can just really be yourself. And, and I am not a great singer, but I believe enthusiasm goes a really long way. So it yes. is, oh my gosh, it's so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. So 60 to 75 women, that's a big group. So how, how do you keep it, you know, intimate and, you know, nobody gets lost. Like that's a, that's a large number of people to learn 75 names. That's it like, is. how we, do you do that? We, we, uh, we wear name tags. So then no one has to be embarrassed about not remembering names. And we encourage, we used to have them um, on lanyards and I can't stand lanyards. So we have little magnetic ones and people, mm -hmm. I mean, people wear them to the run. We had people wearing them to the race at our Portland retreat. I was like, okay, you can leave it back in the hotel room now. Um, so, then we have icebreakers. Like I said, my business partner, Dimity, just loves coming up with good icebreakers. And so, you know, we just kind of bring people out of their shell. We um, kind of put them together in different groups and um, encourage people to really talk to other people. We have brand ambassadors who attend who we call BAM ambassadors, stands for Badass Mother Runner ambassadors and so that we really encourage them and we talk to them ahead of time to say hey can you kind of draw people out and don't just stick a, you know don't just be a click but try to mingle with different people and then Dimity and I at retreats oftentimes feel like um I guess brides at a wedding because we we you know make a point of going around and talking to different people not always eating meals with the same people and it's kind of funny because when I've had people we get a lot of people come to numerous ones of our retreats and so I know these people and so I'm like oh my gosh Kate's here oh my gosh I totally want to sit with Kate well by the end of the time I'm like I've barely gotten to talk to Kate because I'm like no I know Kate really well I shouldn't talk to Kate all the time <laughs> right right <laughs> yeah well, I think that is actually one of the hesitations um, that people might have in their minds when they're thinking about something like this is like, okay, first of all, 
I don't know if I want to go on a vacation with strangers. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. That's kind of weird, especially if I don't know if you put people in the same room together. It might be weird, like doubling up with somebody that you don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and and you know what? Most <laughs> the stereotypical runner is an introvert, right? And <laughs> always afraid of being too slow. I don't care if you're fast. You're still worried about being too slow, right? So so what do you say to those kind of hesitations? Oh, Claire, you nailed the people who come to our <laughs> retreats. I can't tell you the number of women who say, oh, but I'm an introvert. It's like, no, just put yourself out there. But we do, we do a couple things. We have a private Facebook group. Once you register for our retreat, excuse me, then you're entered, you get, you know, entered into this um, Facebook community so that you can get to know people. You can, you know, maybe carpool if you're you know, okay, you're flying when you go Hilton Head, like if you're flying into Savannah, hey, anybody else getting in around noon? Can I hop a ride with you? And mm. so, or, you know, kind of talking about, oh, I'm training for the half marathon. How's it going for you? So that people start to talk to each other that way. They choose whether they have roommates or not. And so then they can connect with people on that Facebook page to find a roommate that they feel compatible with. And then, like I said, we play the icebreaker games and we just remind people that they're all in the same boat. And we find so many women come to these events by themselves and they leave with, you know, 40 best friends. And so that th there's just so many shared laughs. And we always say no questions too basic or too much information. And, you know, you're not allowed to say you're slow. And we so that when we when we have runs, we have different people of different paces who lead the runs. And I got to tell you, I've been injured at a lot of our retreats. And like I said, Dimity doesn't run anymore. So even people who aren't runners, you know, maybe they're injured as well. They're, I've gone swimming with people um, at Hilton Head. We have this beautiful pool there. So we've gone swimming at the same time together. And so you just kind of find your, find your people. And, and I mean, people that we have, you know, oftentimes fire pits at Hilton Head or that sort of thing. So that you just chances to come together and interact in a really low key way. And, you know, hey, a cocktail on the first night helps as well. So, yeah, because mm -hmm. yeah, it's really hard making friends in your 30s, 40s and 50s, with, you know, it as is. an adult, it's hard making friends, especially and, you know, when your spouse is completely sick of hearing about your running, you well, know, <laughs> I was going to say, though, that, that that is one of the great things about a retreat is finally people get why you want to talk about it all the time. And so yeah. someone who will listen to you go on and on about when you finally broke two hours in your half marathon you know, their eyes don't glaze over. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. How'd you do it? You know, can you teach me any tricks that'll help you? That sort of thing. So having like-minded people and I, th what I've discovered in, in uh, almost 13 years, actually, this is our 13, the month of our 13 an year anniversary of doing another mother runner is that there's far more commonalities between runners than there are differences, no matter what part of the country you're from. And that just being able to share that and to come together. And I mean, I mean, heck, we, we had a retreat right around the 2016 election and, and there was just no friction. There was no contention, nothing. It was just like, Hey, we are here. We're going to talk <laughs> about running and maybe some topics about our kids and food and gut issues. And just being able to share anything and everything is really powerful. Yeah, I absolutely love it. So you know, another hesitation that I know people have is, you know, they're looking online, they want to do it, they're nervous about, you know, uh, am I going to fit in? And then, you know, these things aren't exactly cheap because most of these are, you know, in a destination. It's it's all inclusive. You get your food, you get nice lodging, hopefully, you know, they're not cheap. And so people might be a little hesitant to press the button, you know, and the refund policies can be quite strict. So mm -hmm. can you kind of talk about that and, and, you know, as a business owner, your side of it and the flip side as a runner that's, you know, a little worried about that? Well, it's also because here you are as a, um, given the name of our business, most of the people who attend our retreats, but not all by any means are moms. A and so, or, you know, they maybe just have other people in their lives to be taken care of. So to say, I'm going to spend all that money on myself. It's not like, okay, here we spend all this money and all six of us get to go to Disneyland. No, no, no. It's I'm leaving you all. And I spent a bunch of money to do it. So I, I get it. 
but it's about another mother runner from the get go has always been about putting yourself first on your to do list at least once a day. So this is kind of the the Uber version of that. The the you know you're putting yourself first on your vacation list and. I mean, the number of repeat retreaters we get is astounding, and it tells me that it is completely worth the money, and that it's, I mean, we we always ask, we do a post-retreat survey, and we ask if, you know, what speaker did you like best? Did you find that there was enough running? Would you have liked more, you know, kind of relaxing activities, whatever? And then we also say, was it worth, uh, was it a good value? And almost everyone says they got more than they thought they paid for and that they would totally do it again. So, and and our our numbers bear that out. And so to your question about um, refund policy, we had an interesting thing. We planned for a retreat here in Portland, Oregon, where I'm based, our business is based here. And it was scheduled for October of 2020. And that date might ring some bells for you. So there was no retreat happening in October of 2020. So we postponed it a year And then that was when Delta was rearing its ugly head. So we postponed it again. And it was, and we finally had it last October, October of 2022. It was a rousing success. And all these people just stuck with us and were like, yep, just keep rolling my money over and over again. And because we did, we offered people at one point, I guess for for 2021, we said, if you want, you can transfer to a different retreat. And they were Mm -hmm. like, no, mm -mm, I'm looking to come into Oregon, never been to Oregon before. And so it's just, we we do offer um, refunds. It depends on how far out you are from the event. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're 250 days out, you get more than if you're 60 days out, whatever, because we do have hard costs in it. And I think people understand that, you know, our business, your business, we're, we're small, we're running on a shoestring here. We're trying to do something for our community that has true value. And it's not like we're getting rich off of doing this. So, and, and I'm just really pleased that I get to enjoy it all as part of my job. I'm sure you'll feel the same way with your (laughs) Asheville, uh, retreat. You know, it's just, it's just fun. It's tons of fun, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And way more fun (laughs) than a vacation with a bunch of kids. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I I hate to say it. I love my kids, but wow. On vacation, they're tough. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It was, oh my gosh, it was so much fun to be here in my town of Portland, but to be downtown at a hotel where I was the only person in the room, you know, and I think somebody asked me like, oh, is Jack, my husband, going to join me? I'm like, "Uh, no, uh -uh." (laughs) uh-uh. Theoretically, it's just because he has to stay home to take care of the dog and make sure the kids get off to school. But no, it was because I wanted to be in my hotel room by myself. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. So so as you mentioned, yes, I am doing my first retreat. It's it's, okay. So it's not my first retreat. I've actually done many, many of these. Mm. But this is my first as the planted runner 100% on my own. So I Mm -hmm. am doing it in my hometown of Asheville, North Carolina in September. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this selfishly is to get all mm-hmm. your insight and intel. <laughs> but, you know, so I, my, the company I used to work for, Runners Connect, they would do retreats as well. So I've done them internationally. We went to Portugal. We've done them in Orlando. We have done them in Blowing Rock, North Carolina. Um, we've done it in San Diego. So I've done many, many of these. So I, I get the drill, but it is, I have to say, like what you were talking about being a small business owner, it is a little nail biting, you know, doing it just because, like you said, there are hard costs. Like I've got to pay for the hotels. I've got to pay the caterer. You know, mm-hmm. I've mm-hmm. got to hit those marks. So mm-hmm. um, any advice for me from you? Oh, try to get try to get help. I mean, yeah, th- that's what we've discovered over the years is people are very willing to give of themselves. And so, for instance, when we were having the one here in Portland, a bunch of women who I know through another mother runner and just the local running community were like, whatever you want me to do, I'm happy to help. So this woman, Paula, you know, showed up and helped us sign people in on Friday and, you know, and then, you know, to, to pay her for it, we, you know, she stuck around and enjoyed the welcome reception in the podcast recording. So, and, you know, I, I think we gave her a swag bag. So, um, cause don't forget the swag bags that always Ooh. makes for an excellent retreat. Um, so just lean on people because they do like to help and accept that help and just have fun and be relaxed. And 
I definitely always go back to my room and I kind of talk myself up because it is a little bit hard to be, you know, on for four days mm -hmm. and um, be upbeat and, you know, um, you know, uh, we all run into conversational roadblocks every once in a while. It's hard to believe for podcast hosts, but we do. It does happen. <laughs> so, so just kind of, I, I, you know, I listen to a lot of music in my room, get kind of literally hopped up. Then I'm really raring to go by karaoke time, but, um, yeah, and just, just have fun and, and share that fun and, and, um, d you know, draw people out, you know, you're very outgoing. And so just remembering what it's like to be that person who's sitting at the table by herself and just going over, sitting next to that person, you know, how's your training going? Cause you know, you can, uh, as I've said, you can always find common ground with people. So, um, being empathetic and outgoing and upbeat. Now I've got to share that I have finally found a partner for the planted runner that I believe in enough to share with you. And that is Neurify by Prevenex. You know that I'm a huge advocate of getting everything you need for your best health and performance from whole plant foods. But when you're a busy athlete, that just doesn't always work out. I know I need more protein as a runner, especially being plant-based, and I don't wanna just eat blocks of tofu every single meal. But finding a vegan protein powder that meets my high standards hasn't been easy until my friend Whitney told me about Neurify by Prevenex. Neurify only uses the highest quality, most clinically effective and beneficial ingredients and nothing else. The protein is a perfectly balanced amino acid blend of organic yellow pea from Canada and brown rice from the UK. The micronutrients and the probiotics are of the highest quality as well and everything goes through pharmaceutical grade testing to make sure it's free from contamination from heavy metals that, in case you haven't heard, is a real issue with other protein sources on the market. Neurify is a premium meal replacement solution for busy athletes that understand that they need quality nutrition with none of the fillers and junk. But I wouldn't even be talking about this if it weren't delicious. My favorite recipe is to blend a scoop of chocolate Neurify, a little peanut butter with a frozen banana and some plant milk. My friends at Prevenix are giving the Planted Runner listeners 10% off your first order with the coupon code PR15. And when you come back for more, you'll get 10% off every subscribe and save order. Head to www.prevenix.com and use my code PR15 to get started today. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, my retreat is capped at 16. There's only 16 mm. cabins at this mm -hmm. uh, resort. So mine won't, I will not have 75 people, but I will mm -hmm. have help. And I'm mm -hmm. definitely doing the name tags. I am a huge mm -hmm. fan of name mm -hmm. tags. They sound so dorky, but they mm -hmm. are so so helpful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yours, having seen the cabins, I, I love those A-frame cabins there. Mm -hmm. You should do ones, you know, that are kind of made of wood or something like that. Oh that my looks, gosh, how cute. You know, yeah. kind of, you know they, I'm sure your kids went to sleepaway camp or whatnot and came home with their, you know, their camp name on a little log or something. You should do something that's kind of um, organic material. Um, oh, I so. love that. And yeah, yeah, the magnet, I was just going to go with the stick on, hello, my name is, oh. but no, <laughs> no, we'll do <laughs> We'll do oh, the yeah. magnet thing. Definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and also the name tags then, um, we uh, it will show, you know, if they don't eat meat. Obviously, mm -hmm. I'm thinking that is not, you know, that's an understood thing at your retreat. Yes. But, but also, I mean, during COVID, we did or the you know the, when we met in October of 2022 there were still some people who were like you know not into the hugging thing give them a little space mm. so we would have um either a red a yellow or a green um reusable little sticker that you put on it and so it meant like yes I'm open to you standing close to me and us talking or no give me some space so mm -hmm. you can use the name tag for a lot of different things cool be multifunctional cool. yeah Okay, so now I want to get into the really important part of it. What should I pack? <laughs> we do a packing list ahead of time oh, and we send it out and, and we kind of break it up by, you know, these are what you're going to wear. If, if we have a race like in Hilton Head, we have a race, you know, here's what you pack for race day. Here are, you know, what you should wear for s the sessions because our sessions are kind of active. So you don't want to show up, you know, in your, you know, little um, fancy clothes or a skirt or something like that, you know, show up in yoga pants or capris or whatever. And, um, and then talk about what you're going to need for the evening and i assume in Asheville it might get kind of chilly in the evening so letting people know that ahead of time you know and um you, you sort of 
assume that they're adults, but also there is a bit of summer campness to it. So getting that packing list, you know, we're not asking people to put name tags in the back of their clothes so they don't, you know, take home someone else's t-shirt. <laughs> but <laughs> but right. uh, yeah, so but giving them a packing list is, is very helpful. And we also provide um, a PDF of the schedule ahead of time because you will be surprised how people are planners. And they want to know what they're going to do. And particularly if it comes during, you know, if yours is in September, I would assume that for a lot of people, that's before their race cycle, Absolutely. you know, so it's during their, you know, they're training for Chicago, they're training for New York, whatever it exactly. is. And so they want to know, well, am I, to go, I have a 15 miler on my schedule that weekend. How much running am I going to get in? So it creates a sense of calmness and lets them be um, a more relaxed mindset if they know ahead of time what they're getting. Because, you know, you, you kind of get the type A's all the way to the type Z's. We had a woman at one of our retreats in Spokane. We never saw her after the welcome that we did for the group <laughs> because she had been trying to carve out time for herself to write a book proposal. And that quiet hotel room in Spokane, Washington was just what she needed. And I swear we saw her Friday midday. We didn't see her again until she was, you know, getting on the shuttle to go to the airport on Monday. Oh, and funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay, you missed a really great time, but, but you know, uh, she got her book proposal done. So Oh, good for her. That's not yeah. easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I wanted to touch on something you, you mentioned earlier. So, um, you know, what if you're all excited, you signed up for this retreat, and what if you happen to get an injury or something mm -hmm. happens to you that's, you know, can you still go to a running retreat and not run? Oh, I tell you, you should have seen me, Claire, at our Hilton Head <laughs> retreat last February, almost exactly a year ago. I had, it was the onset of several bulging discs I had, and I, it was, it was terrible, and I'm glad that that is in my rearview mirror, and so that I had trouble walking through the airport to get there. And so I was living testament to you can have a great time at our at our retreats, at any retreat, if you can't run. So like I said, we swam. The, our hotel had a gorgeous pool, swam every morning with a couple women who would come out and join me. I'm swimming, not super social sport, but it was nice to know that you're going to meet people out there and be in the water together. And then I was still able to dance at karaoke, so my back wasn't that terrible. You know, I probably ride on a little endorphins. But I, I remember at Ogden, there was another woman who couldn't run. So she and I went together to a pool. We didn't have a pool at the hotel. So we found, you know, a local rec pool and drove over there. And just recently, she was like, Oh, I always think how, how much fun that was to swim with you. So, so it can, it can definitely be done. And, and like I said, Dimity doesn't run at all. So she has a great time and she's super excited to lead people on hikes in Redmond. So it is, and we've had, um, I mean, we've had people be at our retreats who had, you know, a fractured leg or, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and certainly some people have to drop out at the very last minute. I remember one woman's kid broke his arm and so she couldn't show up or, um, but you know, you can, you can just commune with people, sit around by the, you know, fire pit and chat with people. You can do that if you got a cast on your leg or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. bulging discs, it can be done. So yes. just, just the, the community, the in-personness of it, you really don't know how awesome it's going to be until it's happening. And, and yeah, I was also one thing it's over in the blink of an eye. That's the problem, you know, and that, that you really got to jump into it with both feet because on Friday, I always feel Friday afternoon, everybody's a little timid, you know, am I going to find my people here? Everything like that. And then it's just like a Porsche on the Audubon. It just starts speeding up, speeding up, speeding up. And suddenly it's Monday morning. You're saying goodbye to people. It's like, wait, no, 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 no. Can we rewind and go back to it being Saturday morning and have all this time over again? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And, and the one thing is about injured runners, though, I've definitely had some on some of my retreats. They're usually the life of the party, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because they're starting the happy hour and they're staying the latest because they don't have to run 20 miles the next right. day. So right. usually the injured... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the injured yeah. ones are really fun. So yeah. don't back yeah. out. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And our, our your retreat definitely looks like it has a lot of running in it. I'm impressed um, how much running there is. Yeah, well, I mean, the cool thing about it is that we can run right out of the um, cabins. So mm -hmm. you can do an out and back. So you can run a mile or you can run 20 miles, you know, mm. but usually I um, have Saturday be your long run day because people are training for marathons. So you can run a really long time. 
the, uh, the nice thing about that trail is that there's breweries along the way. You know, if you don't want to run, you could stop and have a snack or have a little drink or something like that. Or you can just come right back to your room. And, and we will do a destination run. We'll go and do a trail run one of the days as well. But again, it's all going to be like an out and back or a loop. So you can decide how much running is. It's totally up to you. And we'll have several groups. So um, it's not going to be like you have to run 10 miles or something like that. No, it's going to be do what you want. And the way that it's set up is, is really conducive to that. So I'm, I'm really excited. Oh, yeah. and it's so, so beautiful. Um, I used to be a freelance journalist a million years ago mm-hmm. and I got to go on these press trips and Reebok took a bunch of us in the, gosh, it was probably the mid nineties to the Nantahala outdoor center oh, there yeah. in Asheville. And oh my goodness, it was, and it was right around the time that, um, the Last of the Mohicans with uh, Daniel oh, Day yeah. Lewis came out, and I, mm-hmm. it was filmed right around there, I believe. It was, yes, yes, and so it was. I mean, it looks like those virgin forests that mm-hmm. you know um, James Fenimore Cooper wrote about. I mean, it was pretty amazing. So, yes. it's a truly special location. Yeah, we've had a couple of uh, big movies. The Last of the Mohicans, some of the Hunger Games was filmed around here. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. Dirty Dancing, you know, that lake scene. <laughs> no way. Yeah, oh, no. that's, it that's wasn't not in that the far away. Come on, come <laughs> no. on. I can't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe some of it was. You know, I don't think they did that whole thing, but uh-huh. but that lake scene oh, where of course. she's like, yeah, mm-hmm. that's here. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so a lot of big movie scene here. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're like, you're like us being like, oh, you know, Twilight was filmed around here in Portland <laughs> yeah, and out in the same. gorge and yet yeah, Goonies out at the coast. Like yes. we can go toe for toe for which movies were filmed near us. Yes. <laughs> awesome. So I'd love to kind of wrap it up with some of your favorite memories. Do you have any stories of just how how women bonded? I mean, many of these people who have met on these retreats are still friends years and years later. It's like college, you know? It <laughs> is. still friends. <laughs> so, I mean, is there anything that stands out in particular, some memories of, of, of some of these trips of the women that you've met and honestly, the lives that you've changed by doing this? Well, I mean, definitely going back to Little Rock, there are still women from our Little Rock ret- retreat. Again, that was eight years ago this April, who over the years then get together in different parts of the country, meet up to do races and hang out together. Um, so their friendships going strong, you know, I know they're on Marco Polo, you know, chats or whatever. And so they, that friendships are formed and forged with a, a very serious bond and seeing each other through, you know, cancer diagnoses and, you know, you know, parents going through Alzheimer's, everything, you know, having, getting to share that with people. Um, we, perhaps the most epic thing, unfortunately I missed, we had at our second Cape Cod retreat, I had to, uh, my son's a dancer and he was in a performance that I flew home early for, but the race turned out to be this wicked nor'easter and so the photos of it i mean there are just we always have a cheer section for our races and there are all these women you know with garbage bags and you know the ponchos and all this stuff and i mean it was terrible racing weather but to hear those women talk about it it is just it is a memory that shines so brightly in their mem in their minds because they just feel so badass about you know living through it and being able to share that with people and to know instead of just saying oh wow i was in this race that was a nor'easter and you're like "Mm, okay i bet that was bad to be like yeah i was there oh my gosh remember you know your shoes got so heavy so and then i mean we've done some things that are um interesting we we try to mix things up like i said and so in portland we had a um people had said oh we wish you'd have a um kind of give back to the community type element to the retreat so we brought in what's called the period project and so they packaged together menstrual products for menstruating people experiencing homelessness and so my goodness give a bunch of women runners a job to do and it gets <laughs> done and so there they are we're in a you know hotel conference room and there are tables just piled high with tampons and pads and <laughs> the, the, kind of these wipes and they are just 
packaging them up, packaging, and it was just like squirrels squir- scurrying around right before winter time with nuts. And I mean, they, they finished, pa- and they had brought in um, the organizer had brought in some Girl Scouts because this was the, one of their projects as well. And those kids were just couldn't get baskets to us fast enough because we'd fill them up so quickly. And we're like, hey, we need more tampons over here or whatever. And I mean, we, a job that you know should have taken an hour, we were done in like 25 minutes. And, you know, and then people were able to go back to their communities, maybe contribute to period project, maybe do some volunteering for them. It's a, um, a nonprofit that I've done a lot of volunteering for here in Portland before. So it's something kind of near and dear to my heart. And um, it just, I was really surprised. It got a lot of, on that survey that I mentioned, it got, got a lot of um, positive feedback for um, for an experience. So, you know, that's not what you'd expect from a women's running retreat is, you know, touching a whole bunch of tampons, but you know, it, would, <laughs> it, made, it made a difference. And then, and we were in downtown Portland. So you could kind of see, unfortunately, you could see some of the people that were probably the recipients of these packages. So it, it felt good to be not just coming to the city and kind of tromping all over it, but actually making it a slightly better place. Mm. Well, I think that is a very sweet place to end it, Sarah. But before I let you go, tell us where we can find you. Tell us where people can learn more about your retreats. Yes. So anothermotherrunner.com and you click on the events in the top navigation. And I should say that Redmond retreat is close to selling out. So that's in June. So enough time to do that and then do your retreat and then come to Hilton Head because they are addictive. As I said, we get a lot of repeat retreaters. So um, yeah, so anothermotherrunner.com. So thanks for this opportunity to talk about Claire. Absolutely. Nice to have you. And now it's time for the Mental Strength Minute. Fortify your mind in 60 seconds or less. Today's topic is collecting hope. When we accomplish tasks or check boxes, we feel good. That's why video games are so addictive. And when we feel good, it can actually give us hope and motivation to keep going. So create hope building tasks to collect in a race that have nothing to do with performance. In a race, it could be thanking every volunteer that hands you a cup of water or saying good job to anyone that passes you or that you pass. On a run in your neighborhood, maybe you get a point for every dog that you see or every time that you smile at a pedestrian. Collecting these feel-good points as often as you can might not always make you run faster, but it can certainly make the run a lot more enjoyable. Thank you for listening to the Planted Runner podcast. Don't forget that your Apple podcast review automatically enters you in our monthly contest. One lucky winner will get a signed copy of the Planted Runner book each month this year. So head to Apple Podcasts, leave a review, and you're automatically entered to win. Your reviews are the biggest factor in the success of this show, and I read every single one. Have a great run today.